so you know my teacher gave an excellent pointer for this predicament because a lot of people used to go to him and say there's so much to do you know there's like healing modalities there's spiritual teachers so he would say that do you know what you are looking for because once you know what you are looking for then when you find it you will know you found it and uh, his take was that everyone ba none whether they know it or not are looking for peace of mind at the end of the day everyone in manifestation who is here born here is looking for peace of mind and the reason they are looking for peace of mind is because their own experience is that they are happiest when they have peace and the joke is that that peace is the peace of the deep sleep state because in deep sleep we don't exist the individual does not exist in deep sleep and that is why when we wake up we say we slept well and the reason you slept well is because you did not exist in deep sleep and that is everyone's experience you see so once you know that what i am looking for is peace of mind then you can see the various paths and see which is just giving you an intellectual understanding and which is giving you a taste of that peace and ramana maharshi was asked one question that somebody told him that i have been to many gurus and how do i know which guru is genuine and which not and which is the one meant for me and his answer was the one in whose presence you feel at peace that let that be your measure that is ramana maharshi's answer and that same peace is the absence of the thinking mind when you are in the presence of a sage and you feel at peace or the mind slowing down it is because the sage does not have the thinking mind now on the subject of vipassana which anand has come from I'll tell you what happened with my guru Ramesh some a uh, girl from France had come and she was very wired up you know very her whole body language was quite stressed and she had just done a vipassana course so he asked her can you tell me what you got from the course so she said in a nutshell she said what i understood is vipassana has taught me that if a mosquito comes and sits on my cheek or a fly comes and sits on my cheek while i am in meditation i must not move i must be still and witness the fly on my cheek witness the irritation arising knowing that it is a transient experience and it will pass and ramesh looked at her and said would can i share what i would do if a fly came and sat on my cheek he said i would witness my hand moving up showing the fly away and coming back down so which means that practical pragmatic daily living not this exalted state where you should not react or you should do this you should not do that which becomes burden torture Yes. you see which i found really beautiful it wasn't that he was trying to put down her experience he was trying to just say that relax because she was not relaxed you see she was all wound up and that is the beauty of this teaching because you are at peace nobody has to strive nobody has to put in too much effort because all of that strengthens the ego too much effort is put in by the me so therefore it is a process of letting go see the urge to meditate is not your urge it has come from somewhere what happens is we take ownership of that urge 
somewhere in your past this spark has got ignited so the urge has arisen to meditate now let that which ignited that spark take you forward if your nature is one of being disciplined my nature is being disciplined and i don't it's not a punishment i love waking up at 5 in the morning i love my routine i'm very content with my discipline that's my nature if your nature is not one of discipline do it when you can when you can't don't punish yourself saying that you know i have not done it i'm a bad person like a lot of us go through that go with the flow and at some point by the same grace which has ignited the spark it will become a regular process See even the masters of advaita advocate nisargadatta maharaj himself says to meditate a lot of people think he said no nobody does anything so you should not meditate it is not true yeah we have published a book called meditations with nisargadatta maharaj where he clearly says meditate his meditation is the non dual meditation of meditating on your own beingness so that was his path so if it arises follow it if it doesn't it's fine witness it that it is not happening i was giving a talk to an audience of primarily bhakti yoga people and primarily women who were really on the bhakti path and devotional path I said it's all very well to you know be in love with the statue of Krishna and worship Krishna and all is fine but for me the ultimate bhakti is if you have the full conviction that all there is is consciousness functioning through everyone and we are all programmed by our genetics and conditioning you will not hate anyone that is the ultimate bhakti if you have known that in the kitchen it is the electricity which running through the gadgets produces what each gadget is designed to produce why can you not be convinced of that as far as people are concerned why will you blame people and say this one is like this that one is like that when you know very well that if that consciousness was not functioning through that person he would be dead but in duality what happens is we've become split so we always project we become the subject you become the object and i start blaming and condemning you as an individual not realizing that the same electricity which runs through me is running through you now if you have the total acceptance of that that translates as peace of mind and that is the ultimate bhakti because there's nobody to hate otherwise imagine you're into bhakti yoga where you're worshiping your own statue and your relationship with god but your personal relationships are in a mess is that bhakti what about the living god what is the point of that but that part is generally missed for me that when you said impersonal the reason it is impersonal is because there's no one separate from you it is not a cold feeling of impersonality you know someone upsets you or But someone it's not personal non personal and it is the most intimate kind of feeling because truly if someone crosses your path or upsets you you have the conviction that this could happen only if it was god's will because that person is an instrument of the divine like i am and ramakrishna had said in his book the gospel of ramakrishna he said that the lord came to pralada and said i'll give you a boon ask for anything and he said lord are you joking because i've already had your vision what more is left to ask for so the lord said no no i know you don't be stubborn i'm giving you one more boon and he thought about it and he said okay he said here is my wish that no harm should come to those who have tortured me why because pralada had the full conviction that it was god who was torturing him through those people so to harm those people is to harm god
can you imagine if you live your daily living without blame condemnation ill will spite jealousy hatred that translates as peace of mind or for your own actions the full acceptance that god made you the way you are in spite of all your imperfections you didn't choose your conditioning you didn't choose the economic environment you were born in you didn't choose the friends you would grow up with whether you'd go to school church or temple who created all that a force far higher than you but you have taken ownership and become this bundle of nerves issues ideas so to totally accept i am who i am because god made me that way so what is usually missed in this teaching is that you're fine as far as others are concerned but when it comes to yourself you're always punishing yourself you know but this is saying no give up this this game which you have been playing for so long accept others and accept yourself however you are then if you need to do something about a situation or self improvement or personal journey go ahead that is what the bhagavad gita is about do what you think you must do not saying oh god made me that way and sit back which is what arjuna tried to do saying i can't kill my preceptors and my uncles the whole gita is about that but first step is accept people including yourself for who they are and you will be amazed at the amount of mind space which gets freed up because the mind no longer starts playing that game anymore you know be it your spouse be it your family member colleague at work or even the stranger on the road it could be anyone any form of relationship and you will realize over time with this new way of seeing that maybe there was a knee jerk reaction because conditioning is so strong but after half na you'll say man i fell into that game again and slowly you start disengaging from old patterns you start looking at people differently looking at yourself differently and you start relaxing into what is it can only happen if it was meant to happen There are so many instances like this where you can't find a reason. Ultimately, what did Jesus say? Could Jesus on the cross he could not understand what's happening and he said, "Why are you torturing me like this?" And then he said, "Not my will, O Lord, but thine be done." The intellect gives up. You stop looking for reasons because reasons are in the domain of the thinking mind. you have no idea why someone else picks something against you right you can try and understand it but beyond a point it happened because it was god's will i had about 10 years ago a general manager who ran off with my company's money why did it happen you know what my answer was maybe he needed it god made him that way of course there is hurt because someone i trusted ran off with the money I, we are not here to live like zombies the hurt arising is also natural but with the full conviction that this event could not have happened unless it was god's will there is no hate against him there is a full acceptance of what has happened including the pain we were going to go through because without that money we went really down so there was a full acceptance of that as well because that is life you cannot expect to be beyond all that the point is that you don't compound your imprisonment in this life in this body by converting it into rigorous imprisonment and how do you convert it into rigorous imprisonment by blame condemnation guilt shame pride arrogance jealousy envy 
that goes there was action taken we released an ad saying that he is now on his own but i didn't pursue the police case or something no no and i was so relieved because my lawyer said you must go to court knowing the indian courts i knew that's another 10 years you know <laughs> and i felt that maybe my nature is one of being timid so i've avoided going to the courts conveniently those thoughts came until i read a book called silence of the heart by robert adams who was a disciple of ramana maharshi mm -hmm. and i'm reading it and suddenly robert adams is saying please do not go to court <laughs> i said i'm fine he is talking about a lady who was in the habit of going to the courts who came to him and he was saying how that wraps you more and more in the maya and you know you're blaming someone so you're going to court to get your dues which you might have to do at in certain instances yeah. but i knew it was not for me you see so i was quite satisfied to read that It doesn't mean that what was not for you would apply to everyone. Certainly not, because I have friends who love going to court. They love it; it's their nature. Go to court, but when it's not your nature, that's precisely the point. If you are accepting your nature, then you are at peace. Yes. And I said, no, I don't have the wherewithal to pursue this in court. Let it go. see firstly if the situation is approached with the understanding that this person is an instrument just like i am a lot of the game is given up now there are only two choices personally my view is you cannot ask anyone to change because to do that would imply that you know better you see because what happens is we become the subject and like you are an object for me i am your subject because i am talking to you but the realization that we are all objects including myself goes into the background now the minute you want to tell someone to change you have assumed the subjectivity of god the source because you feel you know better a sage will never want to change anyone because he has the 100% acceptance of the person the way they are now the point is what do i do in such a situation of course i must express myself that these are the things which you have done which have hurt me or upset me now beyond that the only thing to do as ekhart toller would say is to be the witness because in a relationship one person has to be that if the other person's pain body is active or if it's unbearable walk away which is again what he says which is practical advice now if you find you cannot walk away for various reasons circumstantial then beyond expressing yourself there is nothing much to be done besides witnessing but to tell someone to change their ways you may do it but whether that person changes or not is their destiny and your destiny all you can do is express that but as far as i am concerned rarely has it arisen where i have found myself telling someone that please change this behavior or please because you know I have no need for anyone to change themselves. See, nothing prevents you from expressing yourself by saying that look, I am feeling pushed. Because that feeling is actually your feeling. There's a difference between telling someone you're pushing me and saying that I am feeling pushed because to project it onto the other and say you're pushing me is an assumption on your part. because you are feeling the other is pushing you based on your conditioning your nature but 
to express that I am feeling pushed is absolutely fine. Now, if it is happening repeatedly and you feel you can't take it anymore, there is no need to. It is for you to determine your situation, whether you have reached break point and then to walk away or to tell the person that in this dynamic, beyond this, I cannot accept it anymore. But one should not hesitate from expressing oneself, but knowing that it is not an individual doing something to you. You see, because until that shift happens, we will only look at the individual pushing us. When the understanding goes deeper and deeper, that seeing changes, you see, and the buttons of the me which used to be pressed earlier will not be pressed. And even when they are pressed, there will be a biological reaction like anger may arise, which is natural, but that anger will not stretch in the duration of time, where you will say, I am angry. You will be fine the next moment. If that person cracks a joke, you will laugh. The involvement is in the natural reaction of the body. If we are prone, some people have a very strong Mars in their horoscope, which produces anger. Now imagine trying to control your anger when your nature is hardwired in your blueprint to be angry. As Maharaj used to be prone to anger, he would flare up like this and one man asked such a stupid question where Maharaj said, you fool, you've been coming to me for three weeks and you're asking this kind of question. And the man told Maharaj, Maharaj, what to do? God made me this way. And Maharaj burst out laughing. <laughs> now, otherwise Maharaj would have not laughed. He would have said, shit, I was just angry. Now I better keep quiet and show my anger, you know. So that is it. So whatever these feelings you're going through, which are arising with the person in the environment are natural. First, that thing sh must drop that I should not be feeling this. Feel it, feel it 100%. You know, uh, Ram Krishna said when his nephew passed away, he said, I was dancing at his funeral. But the next morning when I woke up, I was racked with grief and he said, me, someone who everyone else calls me an avatar, racked with grief. He said, I could not understand this. I thought I was free from all this. And he said, then the realization dawned that wasn't my nephew a part of my own very self and why would I not cry? So that crying was 100% crying. So, Honestly, that what happens is when we are suffering, like if someone has hurt us, suffer it 100% knowing that it could not have happened if it was not God's will. We want things to be another way. But first, accept fully what is happening and then do what you think you must. We put the wall up even prior to that. First accept it. And everyone has shown us this. Ramakrishna would say when he had the cancer, Mother, why are you torturing me like this? Ramakrishna. Then the acceptance. Joan of Arc when she was being burnt at the stake, she cried out to Archangel Michael. She said, I was a young girl. You gave me a vision of yourself. You gave me a sword and you said, lead the country to war against the British. I did your work and you're burning me at the stake. The young girl of 19 being burnt at the stake. And once she is on the fire, she asks the priest, he says, I accept the will of the Archangel, just I would love to see someone holding a cross which should be my last vision before I go. So they too went through this doubt 
but the acceptance that this could not have happened unless it was God's will. And we are looking, what I said is extreme, but look at your daily life, small examples, and the peace which will start coming upon all these situations which disturb us, which harass us. You will be amazed at how life becomes more equanimous, more smooth, flows easily. Life's journey is short. The faster we grasp the essence of this teaching, it makes it simpler, not easier. Life does not become easier. Life becomes simpler. Which way the judge decides is not in your hands. All you can do is what you think and feel you should do. You know, uh, one man in his late 60s had come to Ramesh. He came to my office for tea. I really liked him, very nice man from New Zealand. And I asked him, now you're going back home. It was his last day. I said, what is that one thing which you'll take with you from what Ramesh has said? And he said, Ramesh says, go with the flow. So I'm going to take that with me. This same man wrote to me after three months. He said, you will not believe what happened. He said that there were floods in New Zealand and his house literally went with the tide, with the river. And he and his wife, the wife was so upset and he was laughing. So the wife said, are you mad? What's wrong with you? You're laughing. He said, but what my guru said is happening. Go with the flow. I'm going with the flow. <laughs> so I've carried that in one of Ramesh's books called Let Life Flow. At the back, I've written about this. Means what? There will be pain. Your house is gone. But the full acceptance that this has happened not because of the fault of the river or the floods. It has happened because it was God's will that it happened. That question is never going to be answered because a painting can never know why the painter painted it. Can a painting ask the painter, why did you paint me? Can an object in manifestation know the will of the subject? That is because the individual me with its sense of doership persists. When the why questions start reducing is when peace starts emerging. Because the why is asked by the ego which wants to know. Which is what the animals don't have. The animals don't ask why. We ask why. So rather than focusing on the why questions, focus on who wants to know why. And as Ramesh would say, if the why comes up, why don't you ask why not? <laughs> who gave you guarantees in life that bad things should not happen? God didn't give you that guarantee. God has not given you that guarantee. You see, it's as simple as if I call him jealous if i say he's jealous i can only call him jealous if i know what jealousy is therefore by calling him jealous i'm pointing at a trait in myself because the feeling arises in my consciousness when i say he is jealous it is he has nothing to do with it it is arising in my consciousness and how because I know what it is to be jealous. If I didn't know what it is to be jealous, I would not be able to say he is jealous. That is the Maya. You see, this finger pointing outside is the Maya. It is all arising in your own consciousness. The first thing is to accept life can be painful. We have a problem with that. You know, someone asked Maharaj at the end of the day, what is your feeling about life and living? And he said, in a joke, he said it, but it was very deep. He said, you know what? My children, I would like to share with you the biggest secret of life. He said, what is it? He said, 82 years ago, my parents enjoyed for 15 minutes 
and I had to suffer for 82 years. Which means, as the Buddha has said, life is suffering. Samsara is dukha, nirvana is shanti. Nirvana is not bliss, nirvana is peace, peace of mind. And that is your natural state because one third of your life, no matter how turbulent your life, how turbulent your waking state, one third of the day is in sleep. So are we grateful to God for giving us peace for one third of our lives? We are not. It doesn't even strike us. Look at the gift God has given. He has given you peace. He has told you, taste it for 8 out of 24 hours. But our life is always a complaint. There is a girl who writes to me, who is a millionaire's daughter. It is her life is a living complaint. Whether it is the streets of Bombay, whether it is noisy, uh, stuff happening, whether whatever it is, whether she has to go from point A to point B, whether it's her parents, complaint, 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 complaint. Which means what? Unacceptance of what is, of people, of circumstances, and who complains? Can you complain in deep sleep? You can't. It is the me with its sense of doership who complains. And you will find that complaints start dropping away with this understanding. Because the me's grip, because the me no longer feels I know what's right and therefore I'm complaining. You start entering a phase of I don't know. And when you don't know, there's lesser to complain about. Complaints really start dissolving. And peace with not knowing what the next moment is going to bring. Sometimes pleasure and sometimes pain. We all have seen in our own lives, things are going great. And with, before you know it, a bus comes and knocks something out of your very existence. That is everyone's life experience. Being shunted between pleasure and pain, pleasure and pain. Yet... We want to have only pleasure and not pain. And again, what Ramesh said was so beautiful because it was my understanding when I was in my teens, when he said he had a migraine for 32 years. And one day when he woke up, it was gone, finished. And he said, that day I realized that the absence of pain is the greatest pleasure. He said, if God came and said, I will give you all the pleasures you want in life, but I'll keep your migraine, he would say, no, God. I would rather have the absence of pain. I don't want the pleasures. That is everyone's experience. You know, we're all so scared of death, but imagine if you were told that Death is just a long, beautiful, deep sleep. You would not be scared of that. Would you be? Nobody would be scared of that. But what? What if you were told that that is reality and this is a dream? Would you want to be woken up? You have assumed, because this is the known, you have assumed that this is what you want forever. That is the me. Surrender and acceptance is the same thing. Surrender and acceptance is the same. But you cannot try to surrender. 
we a lot a lot of us try to surrender <laughs> surrender should happen. surrender will happen if you accept two things god's will and the four words of the bible this too shall pass your own beingness is going to pass the stage between your birth and your death beingness came from you have no idea where you suddenly became aware and the beingness is going to go even that is temporary this too shall pass means a in manifestation whatever happens will pass and you yourself will pass to what you were before you were born and to what you will be after you die so everything loses its meaning and i'm not meaning it in a fatalistic way what i mean is you see the transient nature of things in life because it is the nature is the only thing you can be certain about is that nothing is certain that transience is forever witnessed in the flow of life your thoughts your feelings your emotions circumstances situations is all like the stream going past who the witness it is all witnessed in awareness see if that which wants to accelerate the process is the impediment itself the accelerating of the process is the ego wanting to accelerate the process whereas what we are wanting is the death of the ego you see the this is the maya you know so whatever gave you that original thought that this is too much that will do its job it doesn't need your help it doesn't need your assistance to accelerate the process that is the spark of awakening which has already been lit without which that feeling would not arise let it do its job because you getting involved is not needed that will in fact extend the process you see in practical language if i was to translate surrender to the self so it's not esoteric it would be surrender to your own beingness you see in meditation what they say is that when thoughts arise don't try to push them out witness the thought arising if your mind goes with the thought at some point it comes back because you are aware my mind was traveling so who was aware all the time is the self the witness so surrender to the self means as much as possible be absorbed in your beingness as maharaj would say consciousness contemplating on consciousness is non dual meditation means in meditation just being aware of awareness in meditation i'm not saying in the waking state because you have to go about doing things is being to abide in one's beingness so surrender to the self is to surrender to that according to my understanding as simple as that understanding in action is witnessing that's what i started by saying that you will find your own way of looking at things changing that becomes the surrender to the self in the waking state not just in meditation first of all to sit in meditation is advocated because that what you tap into continues through the day what is that it is the surrender to the self the witnessing so they cannot be separate that the waking state is going to be like this and the surrender to the self is when i'm sitting in contemplation surrender to the self is happening all the time once the realization that the thinking mind of the ego is not engaged in the various activities of the day surrender to the self starts happening everything is predetermined as ramana maharshi says 
every small thing is predetermined now i'll give you this will and desire i'll give you a practical e example as ramesh used to explain it the difference between a sage and a normal person is supposing one sunday afternoon the sage is sitting and feels like having a beer the desire has arisen to have a beer so he goes to the fridge he opens it and he sees there's no beer and he said the desire was to have a beer there's no beer what does he do he's practical he says okay let me send someone down to the shop to see if they have beer so he sends someone down to the shop unfortunately being sunday the shop is closed now what does the sage do the sage has accepted the desire and also accepted that the desire could not be fulfilled by the will of god he is at peace the ordinary man when he sees there's no beer he is a bit upset then he realizes the shop is closed he is more upset then the desire has started raging because he has taken ownership of the desire then he pursues the desire then he blames people he blames his wife why did you not ensure beer was in the house when you know i love to have beer that is the ordinary person blaming someone for something they should have done or not done so the ordinary person gets involved in the desire in the duration of time the sage witnesses the desire arising and whether it is fulfilled or not is god's will you see ramesh had no technique because even maharaj for that matter because techniques were meant for the individual ego mm. so any technique would strengthen the me but what ramesh would say is at the end of the day take just 15 minutes and sit back and look at your actions through the day and pick any one which you think was your action and investigate it and see whether it was truly your action or it happened because you saw something heard something smelled something touched something or tasted something and when you begin this process of investigation you will invariably come to the conclusion that it is not my action because if i was not at a certain place at a certain time and happened to see what i saw my action would not have happened and as you keep doing this investigation you will realize that you are part of the functioning of totality and all actions bar none are not truly your actions and if you reach that conclusion you will also conclude that all actions of others are not truly their actions why because nobody really does anything and the pursuing of this investigation reach, makes one reach the conclusion that all actions are a divine happening which happened because they were meant to happen which translates as peace of mind so a uh, few of the seekers who were really resistant because they said no this is my action that is my action this is my action he would say just sit back for 15 minutes and actually look how did that action begin and then you will see for yourself but actually anup you have not gathered anything from anywhere it appears that way that is already within you what happened when you went there was your daily living which is covered with all this stuff was not covered with this stuff there it's not that that place gave you that that is within you all the time it's not that you've gone there to gather it, it you don't go to arunachala to get peace of mind and then come back to find it's gone that will that is your nature that is your very nature but when you extracted yourself from a particular environment you got in touch with your nature
and the realization that that is your nature is when you will not find the need to go anywhere to tap into that the preference may be to go to the mountains i have a preference to go out of bombay but your very nature is with you at all times it's not i have a, a someone who passed a statement he is a wanderer he'll go and live for 3 4 months at one place but he passed one statement where he said that after 3 4 months any place can get to you and i said i'm really sorry to tell you that it is not the place getting to you it is you getting to yourself after 3 4 months but the projection is on the place but the sheer fact that you felt this for example at haida khan means you know it you have already tasted it you have you have got a glimpse of your own nature because it could be possible that you went to haida khan and were still too engaged and didn't get peace of mind it, that was also possible so you actually got a taste of your <coughs> own self when you went there you got a free sample you got a free gift from god to show you your true nature and to understand that that has not gone anywhere and for that you will feel immense gratitude to god because it is no longer places and things the it's all within you the feeling of peace has arisen within you the place gave you the opportunity to tap back into that you know why do you see some people who go to uh, spiritual places for many years and then stop going because that need to go does not arise why because it's not derived from the place pick something which you felt was your action pick anything can you pick anything now coming here uh, would you consider coming here your action now so which part of all this do you consider as your action let's start with the sheer fact anand that do you choose to breathe now go further from there you could have come here only because you heard that i was giving a talk on sunday morning if you had not heard that you would have not come here you were busy with another engagement with the family if you were unable to resolve that you would not be able to come here you have only come here because you have an innate interest in the subject otherwise you would not be here so as ramana says we are all on a train but we are still putting the load on our heads and moving in the train but the train has taken us from a to b and we say we went from a to b you didn't your body was placed in the train and the train moved from a to b so it appears that we act but none of this would have happened without the will of the source if you were not to be at any place at any point in time no power on earth will make you be there 